You're wasting time with Arrow Productions. This book and movie are good examples of what's wrong with the current cataloging trend of organizing such items as different instances of the same work. The book and movie are very different from each other and both borrow from different influences. Here are three major differences. Number one, they are different genres. The book is a comedy thriller. The movie is a 50s melodrama. A big part of the book is Steinbeck's fly-on-the-wall narration. He makes all sorts of funny remarks about the characters and their surroundings. Judgment is often the f essence of comedy. The movie was made in the era of Carl Rogers' non-judgmental approach, which became popular with his 1951 book, Client-Centered Therapy. Consequently, the movie is populated by dour people who emote loudly over the issues of their day. Also, the book is a series of vignettes connected by the bus ride and the stations. It fits in with the short stories of its time, and it looks ahead to the ensemble pieces of the 1970s. The beginning, middle, and end are only defined by the page numbers. On the other hand, the movie leads to as many happy endings as possible. The moral of the story, mainly directed at women, is that one should be loyal to the love one finds, even if the other person is unfaithful at times. The book doesn't have a moral and lets the group break up almost as randomly as it came together as it happens when people get off the bus. Number two, they have different influences. Much of the book is a loose rewrite of Thornton Wilder's 1927, The Bridge of San Luis Rey. Wilder's book was set in Peru and named after this Spanish mission in Oceanside, California. Camila, in the earlier book, is the very similar Camille in Steinbeck's book. While the passengers necessarily come together on the bus before they do on Wilder's rope bridge, the arc of the stories is very similar. Although he was an Episcopalian and thus part of the Anglican community, Steinbeck was influenced by Roman Catholicism and used California's place names as waypoints in the story. In this case, we have a fictional San Ysidro in the Central Valley, which is around the area of Bakersfield. He most likely had St. Isidore the Farmer in mind with this place name. The bus's destination is a fictional town named for St. John of the Cross, another Spanish saint. He wrote about suffering. The town's name helps signal that the journey might not be that great. Camille Oakes is an alias that the character thinks of on the fly. If we take the end of her first name, we get Mille Oaks, or Thousand Oaks, another town, now a city, that Steinbeck would have known well. The movie, on the other hand, was influenced by other movies. The cast includes Joan Collins, who went on to a long career, but for this movie was not Ava Gardner. Jane Mansfield was not Marilyn Monroe, and Rick Jason was not Marlon Brando. The bus's journey was not quite the tense drive in the 1953 movie Wages of Fear. Number three, and this is the biggest difference, the book is well crafted, while the movie is not. This contrast is why the book is still a classic and why the movie has fallen out of copyright and is available for free on YouTube in the Internet Archive. Fundamentally, this story is about a journey through a rainstorm. The book keeps this in mind, but the movie has different weather in every shot. Here are two of them with their time stamps. Yes, it was black and white in Cinemascope. We can see the bus driving through the rain. When we look out the windshield at the helicopter, it's a bright sunny day. While one would expect a movie set on the bus to have a low budget, this movie is ridiculous. Mistakes like this happen again and again to the point of distraction. 
Have you read The Wayward Bus or seen the movie? Let us know in the comments.